Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of No DQ&A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQCAW. And as always, no DQ.com, your source for the very latest in WWE and TNA. Uh, we're wrapping up a really busy week here on NoDQ.com. A lot of news, a very busy week coming off of um, the TLC pay-per-view and the Slammy Raw and the Tribute to the Troops and Super Smackdown. Uh, a lot went down this week and it's going to be a quiet weekend now. And uh, next week should be pretty quiet with Christmas. All the shows are taped, but um, no dq &A video continues. Got a lot of questions here, so let's get right down to it. Uh, this first one comes from Cool Man 23 Hey Aaron, rumors are going around that The Rock will indeed wrestle at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. If this is true, who do you think he should face? Well, I think that The Rock should definitely be in a match at Elimination Chamber if he is in fact winning the WWE title at the Royal Rumble. Um, what match should he be in? I think that The Rock should be in the Elimination Chamber match itself. If he's going to be the WWE Champion, have him defend the title in the Elimination Chamber match. Um, that way you're putting Rock into a situation that he's never been in before the Elimination Chamber. It's something different and um, you know it, it could change the storylines for WrestleMania. It could get people interested to see uh, what will happen with Rock lose the title before WrestleMania. Um, I think that that would uh, draw a lot of interest into Elimination Chamber to have The Rock involved in the match. And um, you know it's not like The Rock's going to be at any kind of risk. You know I talked about in previous videos how um, the Rock's not going to take a whole lot of uh, crazy bumps, and he's not going to do something that would jeopardize his movie career. But in the Elimination Chamber match, you know, you can have him come in last and just clean house and, and do all of his moves and then do whatever finish you're going to do. So you could definitely have The Rock in the Elimination Chamber match, and I think that that's the way to go. Hey, Aaron, do you think we will see Jeff Hardy return to WWE at the Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant, or do you think he will stay with TNA? Well, first of all, I don't think Jeff Hardy's contract expires until February, so that would uh, rule out him being at the Royal Rumble. Um, my honest opinion at this point is that Jeff Hardy will stay with TNA. That's just uh, my gut feeling and speculation on my part. Um, you know, Jeff Hardy is a top superstar in TNA, and TNA uh, definitely benefits from having Jeff Hardy around. I mean, uh, one, one thing to note about Jeff Hardy is since he's been world champion, um, they, they have done better pay-per-view numbers, and um, their house show numbers have been up a little bit. Um, the ratings haven't really improved at all, but, um, you know, Jeff Hardy does have uh, a little bit of that star power left from WWE. He's still Jeff Hardy. Um, a lot of, uh, he, he has that hardcore fan base, um, and, you know, he has a, lot, a light schedule in TNA, so I think that um, th there's a very good chance he'll stay with them. Now, um... I'm sure the door is always open for him to go back to WWE and have one last run. Maybe Matt Hardy comes back as well and they, they reform the Hardy Boys. I mean, that's always a possibility. But um, at this point, I, I, I think it's more likely he'll, he'll stick around in TNA for the time being. This one comes from DX Are You Ready? Hey Aaron, with Ryback making a reference to Owen Hart on Raw this week, will we see Owen in the Hall of Fame in 2013? Please answer in video. I thought it was really interesting, the Owen Hart reference made by Ryback on Raw this Monday. I don't think that um, it was something that Ryback ad-libbed. I think that um, it was a line that was given to him to say. And if, if it was, in fact, a line that the writers uh, purposely scripted for him to say, um, I would think that there's a reason behind it. They wouldn't just uh, throw out an Owen Hart reference for no reason. And uh, one interesting thing about the Slammies is... Um, that's the show when WWE usually starts to throw out hints for WrestleMania. We, we saw Triple H come out and uh, mention The Undertaker. So it looks like The Undertaker is, in fact, coming back at WrestleMania. Um, and, yeah, I, I just thought it was really interesting that Owen Hart's name was brought up. And um, I'm wondering if there is something to it. And maybe uh, we'll finally get to see Owen Hart in the 2013 Hall of Fame. Um, if there was ever a place to do it, I mean, Madison Square Garden is the perfect spot to uh, have Owen Hart be inducted. Um, perhaps Owen Hart's most famous match of his career was against his brother Bret right there in Madison Square Garden at WrestleMania 10. And you have Bret Hart induct him. Uh, that would be a really special moment. Um, so I, I, I think that um, there, there might be something to it. We'll just have to wait and see. And hopefully there is something to it because... Uh, 
Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame is something that I feel personally is long overdue. Um, you know, he wasn't the biggest star ever. Um, you know, he, he was a top heel for a period, and then uh, he was an upper mid-carder. But, you know, Owen Hart always had great matches, and um, he, he accomplished a lot in WWE. You know, some people say he shouldn't be inducted just on the fact that, you know, he had the accident and uh, died on the pay-per-view. Um, but when you look at his career, he really did accomplish a lot, and I, I think that um, he does deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame based on uh, his accomplishments. This one comes from Blaze and Hayes. If you could go back in time and attend any wrestling event live and in person, which event would you attend? Um, I'd love to go back and uh, see WrestleMania 21 again. I mean, there, there was nothing like being at WrestleMania. It was just um, a spectacle. It was uh, something that felt really surreal when I was there. When I was in the building, I sat down and they started playing the video packages, you know. It, it, it really felt weird to be at WrestleMania. I'm actually here at a, at a historical event. Um, so WrestleMania would be at the top of my list. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to go back and see the, the 99 Royal Rumble again in uh, Arrowhead Pond or Honda Center or whatever it's called. I, I like to think of it as the Arrowhead Pond. Um, but, yeah, that was a great Royal Rumble. That was just a lot of fun because that was during the peak of the Attitude Era. And, um, you know, it was just so much fun seeing The Godfather and uh, Deborah and... You know, all those characters, DX, uh, it was just a really fun atmosphere, and it, it would be great to relive that. This one comes from SodeFan87, System of a Down fan. What are the chances of you getting Santa to return for a holiday edition of No dq and Video? Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news here. You know, uh, Santa um, was the anonymous No DQ GM, um, and he... he uh, made a special appearance on ODQ in a video. He filled in for me for the Christmas edition. But as it turns out, um, WWE made Santa an offer. And this is a spoiler alert. Well, I'm not going to give out too much, but just tune into Raw this coming Monday uh, if you want to know what's up with Santa Claus. That's all I got to say. This one comes from BJ Nation. Hey, Aaron, I've noticed that you were never high on Rey Mysterio being a main eventer. I was just wondering if you felt that his first reign would have been more successful if he had faced more plausible opponents such as Chris Benoit or anyone else who was his size. Well, I think first of all, if you're going to go with Rey Mysterio as world champion, then you, you better push him like a world champion. The problem was that um, WWE put the title on him and I think he lost just about every match on television as world champion. He kept losing time and time out. Um, at least make the attempt to push him as a main eventer. And if it doesn't work, you know, people don't buy into it. They don't buy into it. But the thing is, WWE never even really uh, gave him a chance as world champion. They, they just put the belt on him and then he just kept doing jobs on TV and then uh, lost the title a couple months later. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't have put the title on him in the, in the first place. I know why WWE did it, you know, to capitalize on um, Eddie Guerrero's death and, you know, Rey Mysterio uh, got, the, got this huge rub off of Eddie Guerrero and Eddie Guerrero's name and they, they just went with it. But, um, yeah, I, I think that they, they made a mistake. Uh, you know, if, if you don't really see the guys in main eventer, don't put the title on them in the first place. And Rey Mysterio was the first of uh, many guys that, you know, they would make world champion and then uh, just not push him and not, not, not go all the way with them. You know, guys like Jack Swagger for, for perfect example right there. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna put the title on somebody, uh, you gotta give them wins, and you gotta you gotta make the audience believe that they are the best uh, performer in the world. That that's what you gotta do. This one comes from Nate Nate Dog D A U. Okay, hey Aaron, love the videos. Keep up the good work. With all this talk of Randy Orton's heel turn, do you see him turning and joining the Shield, and would that be a good move for them and Orton? Um, I think Randy Orton is best. Um, staying as a loner, being uh, on his own. Uh, Randy Orton already had the uh, faction. He, he had the, the legacy stable with uh, Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes. So it, it, it's a been there, done that situation. I think that you turn Randy Orton heel, let him be on his own, let him, let him do his own thing. Um, and, and as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, keep the shield as a small group. And, um, you know, they're, they're doing good right now, just the three of them. They don't even really need CM Punk and Paul Heyman at this point. I've talked about 
the idea of them uh, joining up with the shield but the shield's doing doing great so far so uh, keep doing what you're doing if it's working just you know go with it you know there's no need to uh add more people to the mix just uh if something's working right now as it is you know it is right now with the shield just uh keep doing what you're doing all right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ&A Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, tell a friend on Facebook or Twitter. And um, I'll see you uh, next week. It will be me doing the uh, Christmas edition of No DQ&A Video. So for those of you that uh, despised the Santa edition, uh, have no fear. Santa Claus will be busy uh, this holiday season, not just delivering presents. But um, like I said, tune in to Raw this Monday, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. And on that note, I'll see you this coming week for more No DQ&A videos.